Hello and welcome to today's English lesson. My name is Anna English and I am English. British English to be exact. I am broadcasting to you now live from my home in London and today we are talking about the subject of clothes. Clothes. So the things that we wear to cover our bodies. So if you are here, say hello, tell me where you're watching from and tell me what you are wearing right now. Um, so today, of course, we will be going through some pre-prepared notes which I have made for you. Let me show you what I've done. Oh, they're a little bit, they're a bit small. Let me make these a bit bigger for you. Let me know if you are able to see these okay. Here we go. There, is that, is that alright for everybody? Can everyone see that alright? Hopefully it is alright and of course I'm on Skype as well for my patrons. So if you're a patron, pop into the Skype room, say hello and I will answer all your questions there in the Skype room. So hello everyone watching from all over the world. I have people in Spain, Colombia, Iraq, um, Gabon, Gambon, Gambon. Not quite sure how I pronounce that, but hello. Um, I've got people in Norway, Malaysia, wonderful. All over the world, fabulous. In London today, we have beautiful weather. As you can see behind me, the sun is shining there through the doorway. It's absolutely stunning. I hope the weather is good where you are. Um, in South Korea, you're wearing pajamas. I'm guessing it's late in South Korea. Hello in Egypt, hello. Um, Hello, um, Amal, Ibrahim, um, Dream with Zat. Hello in Vietnam. Goodness, loads of us here. Hello, Olga and Georgie. So, if you are here for the very first time, then do make sure that you press that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you don't miss any future lessons. But if you're rejoining me and you're here for the lesson, then let's get started. So, clothes. Really important to get this pronunciation right. We have the TH, so the tongue is between the teeth, and this becomes a Z sound. So let me show you this pronunciation. Clothes, clothes, clothes. Can you do it? Clothes. I'm wearing my clothes. Where are my clothes? I need to buy some more clothes. So it's a little bit of a difficult word. There's lots of dexterity needed in the mouth. You have to use all your muscles to make that sound nice and strong. Clothes. So as I earlier said, clothes are items that are worn to cover the body. The word clothes is a noun. Now I often have to help my students with this word Looks very similar, but it's completely different. This word is cloth, 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 not clothes, cloth. A cloth is a piece of material used for polishing or for cleaning. You have a dish cloth when you wash up the dishes after you've finished eating. So a cloth, very different to clothes. You wouldn't want to wear a cloth because it probably wouldn't cover you. All right. So we have cloth, and we also have the word clothe as a noun, um, sorry, sorry, as a verb, to dress yourself. I clothe myself. Please clothe that child means dress that child. So clothe. Um, oh yes, um, Poluxio has just pointed out a really good point. The word cloth, you can remember it by thinking of a tablecloth, a tablecloth. So nice short vowel in that word. Okay, and the last word that we have to think about related to clothes is clothing. The collective noun, clothing. So clothes collectively. Clothes, clothing, clothe and cloth. Okie dokie. Let's have a look at the actions. So the action of putting on your clothes. We can simply say to put on. So put clothes on. Put clothes on. Make sure you're always using on with put. Put on. You might tell someone to put it on or put them on. 
If you're passing someone a pair of shoes, you might say, put them on. Or if you give someone a cardigan, a cardigan, here, put it on, keep warm. Or here's a hat, put it on. Or you might say to someone, I just need to go and put some clothes on. So make sure you're always using on with put. Put clothes on. Then we can also say to get dressed. I need to get dressed, you need to get dressed, we need to get dressed. Get dressed. Similarly, you can say to get ready. Let's get ready. I need to get ready. Um, this is sometimes used, of course, in the subject that we're talking about, which is to get dressed. You can also use get ready also to um, mean to prepare for anything. So I need to get ready for my exam, which I need, I need to prepare for my exam. I need to get the dinner ready, which means you need to prepare food. But when you're talking about like your morning routine, maybe you're in your pajamas, you have, you'd say, oh, I must get going. I need to get ready. So it just means you need to go and get dressed, ready for the day or ready for the activity you're about to partake in. So we can also say to dress ourselves. Um, you might say, I can't dress myself or I'm not very good at dressing myself. Um, I would say that I'm not very good at dressing myself. I never know what works well together. I have lots of nice skirts and lots of nice tops but I never know how to put them together or what shoes to wear with them. I'm not very good at dressing myself. So to dress yourself. And less commonly, we could also say to clothe ourselves or to clothe someone else. So to clothe another person. Um, I clothe my children every morning. We wouldn't really say it. It's not very common. We'd normally say I dress my children in the morning or I help my children to get dressed or to get ready. I help my children to put on their clothes. All right. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? Um, hello, hello, hello. So Sky, you can't stay with us. You're preparing for an exam. Okay, well, good luck for tomorrow. Um, it sounds like close. Yes, so clothes sounds like close. It's just we have a TH in clothe, so the tongue is out and it's voiced. So voiceless close and voiced clothes. So the TH and the voiced S. Um, <laughs> Shannon, that's very funny. You just said to your mum, get me some new clothes. And she just, and she just said, you mean clothes? Good, good. Well, now you know how to say it correctly, clothes. Um, so cloth and clothes, good. All right, so let's carry on, shall we? Let's have a look back up these notes. So some examples of sentences using these action words as requests. So if you're asking someone to put on their clothes, you would say, can you please get dressed? So you might say to your children or to your partner, can you please get dressed? We have to leave the house. Or you might say, hurry up and get ready. Hurry up and get ready. Or you could say, will you put some clothes on? <laughs> Maybe, my mum used to say this to me when I was younger. I would come down um, in the summertime wearing like maybe a very short skirt and a very small t-shirt or a crop top which is where your stomach is showing. And she would say, oh, when you put some clothes on, you can't go out like that. And me as a teenager, I'd go, oh, mom, I have got clothes on. And she'd make me go upstairs and put on something more modest. <laughs> okay, so will you put some clothes on? Someone might say to you. And you could say, can you dress in something smart, please? So if you want someone to dress up for a formal occasion, you might say, can you dress in something smart, please? That would be most appropriate for the evening. Um, yes, my mum is always saying to me, you know, hurry up and get ready, hurry up, get dressed. These are phrases I hear all the time. So hello, if you are just joining, we have 160 people in here now. That's wonderful. If you are here and you're wearing clothes, then please 
press the thumb button and show me that you are wearing clothes. <laughs> so press the thumb to show me you're wearing clothes. Thumb up, not thumb down, thumb up. And if you're not already a subscriber, but learning English is important to you, or you like learning English, then please do press the subscribe button and the bell notification button so you don't miss any future lessons. Okay? Um, all right. Hello, patrons. You are here. Shall I have a quick, quick hello, see what you guys are saying? Hello. How do you pronounce cloths? So if we're talking about many dish cloths, so we have a number of dish cloths for washing the dishes, we would just say cloths, cloths. So difference to clothes, because clothes is voiced, but the same positions, cloths for washing up, clothes for wearing, cloths, clothes. Good. Um, Sky says, everyone is wearing clothes. Of course they are, so I should have 160 thumbs. <laughs> I bet I don't. Let's have a look. Should we have a quick gander? Have a quick gander is slang for have a quick look. Have a quick gander. Um, oh dear. Oh, we have one thumb down. Someone is naked. Someone is not wearing clothes. And we have 70 thumbs up. So what are the rest of you doing? 76. 76 of you are wearing clothes. <laughs> Good. Okay. Alrighty, let's carry on, shall we? Um, good. Here we go. Ba, ba, ba. So, let's have a look at the items. Oh, what's going on here? So, first of all, we're looking at what you are wearing underneath. What you're wearing underneath, the very base layer, the very basic layer, what's next to your skin. We call this the underwear your underwear. Men and women wear underwear. Underwear is a general term for the garments underneath everything else. So the garments closest to your skin, usually around your private areas, your underwear. All right. Now, just so you know, anyone who is choosing to sponsor this video with a super chat will receive these notes that I'm using to um, give you this lesson. So if that would be helpful to you and you want to support the, the growth of this channel and this community, then just drop a super chat. It's very easy. You just hit the dollar sign next to the emoji sign where the comments are and um, select how much you would like to sponsor this video with. And it can be as little as you like or as much as you like. And in return, at the end, I will send you these notes. And you'll also get a shout out, of course. Okay, so underwear general, like I said, the clothes men and women wear beneath their main clothes, and men wear underpants. So we say underpants for a man, and here we go, here is a man wearing his underpants. He's a very muscly man, showing his muscles, wearing his underpants. Also known as pants, so we could say pants or underpants. Now, really important point, in America, Pants are different to pants in England. In America, pants are trousers, what cover your whole legs. In England, pants are simply just your underpants, so a man's underwear. So, but there is a but, I'm going to come to that. So if you say to an Englishman, um, let me see your pants, or put your pants on, you're talking about his underwear. If you say to an American, let me see your pants, or put your pants on, you're talking about trousers. Okay? Now, the only, the only exception here is, in the north of England, pants also, like America, can sometimes mean trousers. So it's confusing sometimes, even the natives get confused sometimes. Um, but in general, just remember, pants for the UK is your underwear. A male a male's underwear. So we have um, his underpants, his pants. He'd also, of course, wear socks um, on his feet. Um, but there's two different types of underpants, so two main different types of underpants. And um, for a man, these are boxers. So the bigger type of underpants, the ones that look like very short shorts, these are boxers or boxer shorts. Let me write that in. Boxer shorts. 
or boxers. Boxer shorts or boxers, okay? Um, just like a boxer in a ring. He's wearing boxer shorts. Boxers or boxer shorts. Now, um, he also might decide to wear briefs. Briefs are sometimes known as Y fronts. If they have that kind of Y shape or the upside down Y here, then they're known as Y fronts. But briefs are the tighter ones that don't look like shorts. They look more like a lady's underwear, like knickers. So if they've got this shape around the hip or around the top of the leg, then these are briefs. 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 Boxers. Briefs. Okay? So that is the difference. Boxers and briefs. But you could call all types just underpants. They're underpants. Pants, underpants, boxes or briefs to be more specific. Um, of course, one of you bringing up the subject of SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, the cartoon SpongeBob SquarePants. But that's an American cartoon and his pants are his trousers. So it's very different. Um, so what are trousers in America? Amal, trousers are trousers or pants? Both the same, both the same. Um, Okie dokie, so let's carry on. <laughs> so for a lady, a lady's underwear, ha there's a little bit more to what a lady has to wear. Um, so a lady has knickers. Now be aware, this is a silent K. K is not present in this word. We have n, knickers, knickers. So ladies wear knickers and that's the same as a man's, as a man's briefs. Really. She also wears a bra to cover her breasts. A bra, bra. This is a bra here. I mean, this is more of a sports bra. She looks like she's going to go and do some running or something. Um, but this is the bra here. These are the knickers to cover your lower half and a bra to cover the upper half. Obviously, socks cover your feet. Now, tights, tights cover your whole leg. Tights cover your whole leg, all the way up, and they have um, a waistband that comes all the way up to the, around the waist. So they're like trousers. You can have footless tights, so ones that don't cover the feet as well. Or you can have full tights, footed tights. Um, so, tights. They usually, usually ladies wear tights with a dress or a skirt. And then they have sometimes wear stockings. Stockings are tights that only come up to here on the leg. So they're tights that cover the leg, but they don't have the bit that covers up the groin area. Um, so one of you is asking, are footless tights leggings? Leggings are very tight trousers or very thick tights. Um, they hug the leg, it's leggings, they hug the leg. Um, footless tights in some cases can feel like leggings, but I think the thing with tights is you can see through them. With leggings you shouldn't be able to see through, so it's about how thin the material is. So leggings are meant for just wearing leggings and nothing else. Tights are meant for wearing underneath something else, so underneath a skirt or a pair of shorts or um, a dress. So leggings is, um, leggings is normal clothing, tights or stockings are underwear. All right, um, it's very dark here, I might just turn on my light. Um, so let me just put you back to these. I'm going to turn the light on. There we go, has that made any difference? Do I look brighter now? Yay, a bit brighter, there we go. There we go. All right, so we also um, can break down the the main title of knickers into many other types of knickers. So there's briefs. Now briefs are full knickers, kind of like, a bit like these. They look just like the male briefs. They've got this curl around the leg and they should really, I mean they don't in this picture, but they should really cover the whole bottom. Like, like this, these are briefs. These are briefs here. I mean these are, those are bigger, they're almost like shorts, short knickers. But these are briefs. So they cover the full bottom 
and they're quite big. Now we also have a thong. A thong, the back of the thong goes between the bum cheeks. So it looks like, like this really, that's the thong, that's a thong, these are thongs really, because they go up between the bum cheeks. So if it exposes the bum, they are thongs. Now this might be a difficult pronunciation, so just pay attention, we have th between the teeth, thong, and it's an ng, so the tongue goes up to the back, thongs, and a z, thongs, thongs, or if we're talking about one pair, it's a thong, a thong, no s on the end, thong. So, do you prefer briefs or thongs? There's a question. Do you prefer briefs or thongs? Now, you can also have a G-string. You might hear about a G-string. I don't hear this very often. I don't hear this very often, um, but something to be aware of. A G-string is a very stringy pair of knickers. So this is like a G-string, when it's like strings around the hips. So if it's stringy around the hips, and usually it's a string down the bottom here as well, they're a G-string. Um, I am not a big fan myself of G-strings. I think they're terribly uncomfortable. You just think constantly you've got something between your bum cheeks, which you have. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable. Um, let's have a look at what you guys are saying here. Um, one of you's asked about jeggings. What are jeggings? Jeggings are like leggings that look like jeans. So leggings, leggings hug the leg really tight on the leg and normally stretchy. Um, so it's leggings that look like jeans and maybe they have a little bit of the demon material, the blue demon. Um, but yes, yeah, so jeggings look like jeans but they're leggings. They hug the leg. Uh, what else are we saying? Is, yes, ba ba ba, very beautiful, thank you very much. Um, why is there so many different types of underwear? Um, I guess we like variety. We have a saying, Variety is the spice of life. Have you heard this? Variety is the spice of life. It means that variety uh, makes things interesting and spicy and exciting. Um, one of you is a nudist. That means you don't wear any kind of clothing. Good, okay. Um, Krishna, is that you? <laughs> um, bum cheeks. You don't know what bum cheeks are. Bum cheeks are these. It's a cheek and that's a cheek on your bum, because obviously cheeks are also these, cheek, cheek. Now think about it, that could be a bum cheek. <laughs> and that could be a bum cheek. So they're cheeks on your bum, bum cheeks. It's probably um, a less formal way of saying, yes it is, it's the informal way of saying buttocks. Buttocks is the technical term, bum cheeks is kind of like the common, um, the common kind of just, informal way of, of talking about buttocks. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's move past the bottoms. Um, ladies also wear socks, of course. I should have just added that on, socks. Um, all right, so now that, we've, now that we've talked about underwear, do you have any further questions about underwear? I've misspelt cheeks. Oh, I see, of course I have. Miss Dyslexic, I'm always misspelling something. Thank you for correcting me, where was it there? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now we've finished talking about underwear, just let me know if you've got any questions about underwear and I will um, answer them now. And uh, while I'm just waiting to see if, if any questions come through, I'm just gonna check to see. 99 of you are wearing clothes. So I can see 99 thumbs up, that means 99 of you are wearing clothes. If you are here and you haven't yet given me a thumb up and you're wearing clothes, then please press that thumb. Press the thumb to tell me you're wearing clothes. And uh, yes, as I can see, one of you is naked right now. Um, do Brits prefer the word bums or butts? So, good question. Britain tend to use the word bum. Bum, meaning your buttocks, your bum. Um, Americans normally say butt. Um, we sometimes say things like, I'll kick your butt. No, we don't, actually. We'll say, I'll kick his bum. Bum. We say bum or bottom. 
and Americans mostly say but. Okay? Lots of thumbs up coming up. So we have 106 thumbs. Woohoo! Can we get any more thumbs going on? I've just given myself a thumb because I'm wearing clothes. So there we go. Patrons, you're very quiet today. Are you all right? Are my patrons okay? I have to look after my patrons. My patrons look after you. My patrons look after me. So I have to look after them. Um, boxers and boxer shorts that are the same. Yes, they are. They're just Boxers is an easy, quick way of saying boxer shorts. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, we have 198 people in. I wonder if we can tip that over to 200. If you're here and um, you have a social media account on Facebook, Twitter, or anything else, click the share button. Click the share button now and share this video with one of your social media platforms. Let's see if we can push this video into the 200s. If you've pressed share, then let me know in the comments that you've pressed share. Tell me where you've shared it and I will give you a shout out right now. So do that for me and I'll give you a shout out, okay? And while I'm just waiting to see if anyone has, I will carry on to talk about the top half, the top half of our clothing. So we have um, a blouse. A lady might wear a blouse. I put F here to mean female. Yeah, so that means female. So ladies wear blouses. Men, this is for male. Men wear shirts. Now you can say a lady is wearing a shirt, but the correct thing is to say a blouse. So a lady wears a blouse, a man wears a shirt. A shirt is what you can see here. In fact, that's a blouse as well. Let me take these up. Move these up here. There we go. Make her a bit smaller. So she's wearing a blouse and he is wearing a shirt. Shirts are usually able to be buttoned up. They've got buttons and you normally wear a shirt to work. Oh, Ella, thank you so much. Oh, bless you. So Ella, Ella Joseline, Joseline, amazing singer, by the way, has um, just sent me a two euro super chat. Um, so thank you very much for sponsoring this video, Ella. You are amazing. Guys, if you like singers and um, you have some time later today, then do go and check out Ella's, um, Ella's YouTube channel because I checked it out yesterday. I subscribed because she has an amazing voice. So please do go and check her out and give her some love. Um, thank you for sponsoring this video. All the money and all the sponsorships that go towards these videos are then reinvested into making this channel bigger and better. So everything that comes through from my patrons or from my super chats go back into you and making your education better, more entertaining, higher quality. So thank you very much, Ella. That's much appreciated. Do send me an email. I gave you my email address yesterday and I'll send you the notes, okay, from today and from yesterday because you gave me two super chats. So thank you very much. Alrighty. Has anyone been clicking share? Has anyone been sharing? Does anyone deserve a shout out right now? Da, 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 da. No, no, nobody shared. Okay. Okay, I'll just carry on then. Um, so we have a blouse, and that's a Z sound, a blouse for women and a shirt for men. Now, I do hear this mispronounced regularly. Um, so they're blouse for women, shirt for men. So we don't pronounce the R, so we don't have to go shirt. This is a long vowel, uh, see how flat my tongue is, uh, shirt, shirt, shirt. I need a shirt. I need to iron my shirt for work. Okay, good. Um, okay, Hamdain Mohammed Amin, you did it. You shared it. Awesome. Alice Lect, 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 Lert, Lect, Lert. You shared it, awesome, you guys are incredible. Um, Amir Awi, you're, I'm sharing your life, great, okay. Um, Anna, are thongs flip-flops in Australia? Do you know what, that rings a bell. Flip-flops are something very different in the UK and we'll talk about that later, but potentially it could be a flip-flop. No, 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 a thong, I see, yes, 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 a thong, is the knickers, but a foot thong is a flip-flop. So now I see what you're saying. Yes, that's why I've heard about it, because a flip-flop is a foot thong, I think. 
I think. <laughs> anyway, um, let's not learn the Australian vocabulary because that's just going to confuse things even more. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Ivela, you have just sent a two pound super chat. Thank you so much. You said, hi, you are a very useful teacher. You deserve it. Thank you so much. Remember, at the end, if you drop me an email, my email address is at the bottom of the description of this video. Drop me an email. Um, Avela? Avail, avail, is that how I pronounce it? Avela? Drop me an email and I will send you these notes. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, Paloxio. Paloxio says, that rings a bell. What does this mean, that rings a bell? If something rings a bell, it means it reminds you of something or, yeah, it reminds you of something or it makes you remember something. Um, do you remember this song? La, 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 la. And you go, oh, I th it, it sounds familiar. That rings a bell. So think of it as it sounds familiar. It rings a bell. Okay. So, um, if a blouse resembles a shirt, can it be called so? I would say so. Um, so, if a lady is wearing a shirt, if a lady is wearing a man's shirt or a shirt that looks very similar to a man's shirt, then there's nothing wrong with a native to just say, she's wearing a shirt. I, I guess technically, shirts that are made for women are called blouses, I guess. So... Um, but now you know, shirts, I, you could use it, but a man never wears a blouse, a man never wears a blouse, okay? Um, oh, Sarija, you've just shared on WhatsApp, awesome, thank you very much. Uh, let's jump back onto the note, shall we? So, um, also with a, a shirt, you might wear a tie, you might wear a tie, let me take this down one, um, or even a bow tie. Hmm, I'm sure I had some pictures here for you of a tie and a bow tie. Yes, I do there. Okay, so I'll remove these from here and come back to them later. I've, I've written it twice. Silly me. Okay, so we have a shirt and a blouse, but then also a very, very common item of clothing is a t-shirt. This is a t-shirt. It doesn't open up at the front, and that's why it's a, a t-shirt and not a shirt. Normally, the average t-shirt is short-sleeved. But if you want to be specific, you could say a short-sleeved t-shirt. But um, kind of automatically, if you say a t-shirt, people would think of a short-sleeved t-shirt. If you want to say it's a long-sleeved t-shirt, if these sleeves come all the way down to the wrists, then you have to specifically say a long-sleeved t-shirt. I'm wearing a long, long sleeved t-shirt. I'm wearing a long sleeved t-shirt. Um, I don't have one here to show you actually, but it's simply just the sleeve comes down to the wrist. A long sleeved t-shirt. Okay, um, some of you are wearing t-shirts now. Um, you wouldn't say a blouse shirt. One of you's asked, would, it, would, would you say a blouse shirt? No, it's either a blouse or a shirt. If you're a woman, it's a blouse. If, if you're a man, a shirt. Um, ba, ba, ba. Okay, let's carry on. Um, great, all right. So we have a t-shirt. Men and women can wear t-shirts. So men and women can wear t-shirts. There's no, there's no difference in the name, whether it's male or female. You can also wear a sleeveless t-shirt, although more often, and that's when it's cut off here, a sleeveless t-shirt. But more often, a sleeveless t-shirt like this is, a, is called a vest. A vest. Um, and um, men and women can wear vests. Um, sometimes men will wear a vest underneath their shirt if it is quite cold. But a vest is a t-shirt without arms. Um, also, something I haven't written on here actually. A crop top. Maybe it's two words, crop top. A crop top is, um, oh, don't want to highlight that. A crop top, highlight. A crop top is a t-shirt that shows your tummy. So if it shows the stomach. Let me move our lady over here. 
So it's a t-shirt that shows the stomach. Hers is kind of like a crop top, but it really has to show the belly button to be a true crop top. When I was a teenager, I used to wear crop tops all the time. They were very much the fashion. They were, they were trendy. It was trendy to wear crop tops when I was younger. Um, so I used to wear crop tops all the time. I wouldn't really wear a crop top now. Sometimes, maybe, but I'm a bit too old for crop tops, I think. Um, how do you call the small place you attach the tie? The collar. So you put the tie in the shirt is the collar. You fold the collar over and the tie goes around the neck, neck here. Anything that goes around your neck is referred to as a collar. The collar. So the collar of a coat, the collar of a shirt. And you have the top button, of course, of your shirt. <clears throat> okay. So let's carry on. Um... You can also have a jumper, so you can have a top that's like a jumper. And this lady here is wearing a jumper. A jumper is long-sleeved. Um, it's usually thicker and it's usually made of wool. Male or female can wear... Um, oh, no, not that one. Male or female can wear jumpers. Um, it's normally woolen and thick. So you can have short-sleeved jumpers if they're like cut off to here like a t-shirt. But if it's made of wool, it's a jumper. If it has no sleeves and it's made of wool, then it's a tank top. A tank top. You don't see tank tops very often. They're not really in fashion at the moment. Um, and if you have a jumper that has buttons down the front or that's open at the front so you can just wear it over your shoulders and your arms and have it around your body but it's not closed here, that's called a cardigan. A cardigan. Now, I am a big fan of cardigans. I have lots of cardigans. The reason I love cardigans is you just put them around you. You don't have to take them over your head. As a, as a lady, I'm sure other ladies will appreciate this, when you've done your hair and you've done your makeup and then you have to put a, a jumper over your head and pull it down, it messes up your hair and sometimes sponges your makeup. So I don't really like jumpers and also I get too hot in a jumper usually. So a cardigan, at least you can open it up and close it really easily. So I prefer a cardigan. What do you prefer, a jumper or a cardigan? Um, how can man wear a jumper? It's just, a jumper is just like a long sleeve t-shirt made out of wool. It's just a, a jumper. It's a jumper. A jumper is a jumper. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. It's a jumper. Um, Okay, let's carry on. Oh, what are we saying, my patrons? What are you saying? Um, how, what do you call a short sleeve blouse? What do you call a short sleeve blouse? Um, or, so you've written this question wrong. You say, how, how do you, what, what, what would you call? What would you call a short sleeve blouse? Is how you should word that question. A short sleeve blouse is still just a blouse. Um, you can just say a short sleeve blouse. That works fine. Or you, you can literally, if it's not a jumper, if it's some form of top, you can just call it a top. Not for a shirt and not for a jumper, but you just say a top. If it's like some form of t-shirt or a vest or a blouse without sleeves, it's a top. So she took her top off. <gasps> or put your top on. Or I like your top. It's just something you're wearing on the top, okay? I hope that answers your question, Georgie. All right, so we have a cardigan. Are you a cardigan or a jumper person? You may also be a hoodie person, someone who wears a hoodie. A hoodie is a jumper with a hood. It just has a hood attached to it. I have lots of hoodies as well. I wear them for doing sports. Um, normally I wear them like after I've just finished sports so it keeps me warm. Um, quite a lot of you prefer cardigans. Oh, one of you's mentioned the word poncho. Poncho. Now a poncho, interestingly, I haven't written this one down. A poncho is like a big piece of material with one hole in the middle to put your head through. So you put your head through it and then it's like a blanket. It covers all your top. A poncho. I have a poncho. I think a poncho is Spanish or Mexican or something. The origins of a poncho. 
All right, let's carry on. So let's now talk about the bottom half. This is quite easy, I think. Okay, so on the bottom half, you'd wear trousers. Trousers. Um, you would wear trousers to work, probably. Um, you can have smart trousers for work, or you can have comfy trousers. So comfy trousers might be like um, leggings. Uh, so leggings are the tight ones that hug your legs. You might have jogging bottoms. Jogging bottoms are what you would jog in, but lots of people just wear them just to be around the house, to be comfy in, because they're loose. And then you would have suit trousers, which is what you would wear to work. Suit trousers or smart trousers. Of course, there are many other different ways of describing these different items of clothing, but these are just the basics. Jogging bottoms are also sometimes referred to as joggers. I'm wearing my joggers. Can I wear my joggers? You can't wear your joggers to work. It's not appropriate to wear your joggers to work. Um, yes, of course, we've got um, chinos as well. Chinos are a certain type of trouser. Um, so then we also have, which most people own a pair of jeans. Jeans. And jeans are made out of demin. Demin. So I own two pairs. Oh, no, I own... Three pairs of jeans, actually. I own a old, an old pair of scruffy jeans, which I don't ever wear out because they're scruffy and they've got holes in them. Um, but I keep them because they're handy for doing like manual work, dirty work, if I'm cleaning the house or if I'm moving house or if I'm doing something in the garden when it's cold, I would wear my, my old jeans. I've got jeans with lots of pockets down the legs. Um, which are quite cool, but they're grey and they've got pockets, so they're a bit of a fashion statement. Um, and then I have just some normal, everyday, going out jeans, which also have a hole in, but the hole's not so bad. And, you know, at some point soon I'll probably buy a new pair of jeans, because they have holes in. Anyway, so I'm sure most people have a pair of jeans. Then, if it's warm enough, you might have a pair of shorts. Now, there are a couple of other types of shorts that you might hear talked about. Someone might say board shorts. Board shorts are the big baggy shorts that men wear. They're called board shorts because they're what people normally wear when they're surfing or to the beach. So the big baggy shorts that men wear, they're kind of down to the knees, board shorts, okay? But you don't have to be a surfer to wear board shorts. I know lots of people who don't surf who wear board shorts. A lady, or a man even actually, um, might wear hot pants. These are the very, very short shorts that are very short and very tight. Hot pants. Hot pants. I once owned a pair of hot pants when I was a teenager. I don't own a pair of hot pants anymore. I would not be caught dead in a pair of hot pants because... <laughs> I don't have the legs for it, or the bottom for it. Hot pants are definitely not for someone of my age, I don't think. Not unless you're Kylie Minogue, or someone like that. Um, Amara Mark, how can I join your Skype group? Uh, well, if you don't know, the Skype group is for patrons only, so that patrons can get special attention uh, throughout all my live lessons. Patrons are people who support this channel in a financial way. And also, I ask their advice on things as well, and and uh, take their feedback. So if you are able to support the channel in any way financially, even if it's just a dollar a month, then you'll be rewarded with joining the Skype group, with getting early access to all my videos, and um, receiving answers to your questions on the Patreon page. So all you have to do if you're interested in that is to click on the link which should be in the description box below. Ba, ba, ba. Yes, it is. It says join our patron team, and there's a link there for you to go and look at all the options and all the rewards offered to patrons. Of course, we'd love you to join the team. Every little bit helps, and it helps this channel to get bigger and better. Okay, I'm just going to have a quick drink of water, and while I do that, I'm just going to remind you guys that if you're not already a subscriber, then please do subscribe and press the bell notification button 
after subscribe so you don't miss any future lessons. Okay, so I've had a drink of water. Let's get back onto it straight in. So, um, shorts, hot pants or board shorts or just normal shorts. You might have denim shorts. I'm wearing a pair of denim shorts right now because it's very hot here under my dress. You might have a pair of dungarees. Now, these are dungarees. I love dungarees. Dungarees are like shorts, or they could be full length, actually. They could be full length trousers, but they're attached to a top half that normally have straps that go over the shoulders. Dungarees. I love them. And I have a pair. In fact, I have two pairs of dungarees. Two pairs. I have full length and I have short dungarees. I love them. Also, you might hear the word or the phrase romper suit, a romper suit or an all-in-one. Babies tend to wear romper suits and all-in-ones. They're literally the all-in-one suits, similar to dungarees, but dungarees tend to be demin, and whereas a romper suit can be any material. Um, all right, and also, of course, um, a lady might wear a skirt. That I've put their F for female. There are a couple of different types of skirts you could wear. You could wear a mini skirt, which is a teeny tiny skirt that's very, very, very small and usually quite tight. A pencil skirt. A pencil skirt normally comes down to the knee or past the knee, down to the middle of the calf. And it's very tight. It looks like a pencil. It's, it's completely figure hugging. It comes all the way down, hugging the legs. So it makes you look like a pencil and you have to walk like a pencil because you can't move your legs. A pencil skirt. Lots of women in business would wear pencil skirts, perhaps. Um, and then also you could talk about a full length skirt. So if it's all the way to the floor, it's a full length skirt. Uh, not very common here in the UK for people to wear full length skirts. Sometimes in the summer they do, like um, big flowing long skirts. Um, I also, oh yes, dresses there, we're talking about dresses there, okay. All right, so some extra things that I haven't covered. Um, extra things that I haven't covered. Oh, sorry, let me just talk about skirts. Kilt. So, um, if you are Scottish, if you're a Scottish man, then you will wear a skirt, potentially at some point in your life. You'll wear what's called a kilt. K-I-L-T, a kilt. Only really worn by Scottish men, a kilt. It's a skirt that wraps around, it's um, a kilt, is usually has specific patterns that are specific to your family um, and your heritage. It has a specific pattern that is like the McDougal's or the McDonald's have their own special pattern that represents their family. So um, Scotsmen may mainly get married in their kilts or they'll wear their kilts for special occasions. Um, some wear their kilts all year round, but a kilt is a Scottish men's skirt. Okay, thank you for bringing that up. I'd forgotten about that. Great. Um, Amar Amar says, I can't help you with money, but I can translate your videos into Arabic language. Um, I mean, that would be great. Obviously, all contributions um, in terms of language are really helpful. Um, will that enable me to join the Skype group? I'm afraid not. The Skype group is only reserved for patrons, but I do appreciate any help that you can give with translations. And for everyone who has already translated my videos, thank you so much. That's very, very kind of you. And it's very helpful for your fellow countrymen. So let's carry on here. Time is ticking. So some extra things. Obviously, men will at some point wear a suit, and women, actually. We think about men wearing suits more often because that tends to be what a man will wear for work. A man will also wear a suit for his wedding, usually. Um, obviously, this is specific to the UK. In other countries, there are different types of clothes, but for the UK, men tend to wear suits. Now, a man might wear a three-piece suit. A three-piece suit is when you have a waistcoat, a jacket, and a pair of trousers. A three-piece suit. Or just a suit would be a jacket and trousers. So, jacket. Make sure that J is a hard plosive sound. J. Jacket, not J. We don't vibrate it, so it's jackets. You wear a jacket. A jacket can also be something you wear over the top of your clothes if you're a little bit cold. So it's not a full coat, but it's like a thin coat, a jacket. 
So I have a few jackets for when it's like spring or autumn. Um, and then of course a coat for when it's winter or when it's cold, you wear a coat. You could also wear something on your head, a hat, and there are many different types of hats that we might cover in a different lesson, or a cap. A cap has usually a front peak to it, a cap. And it stops the sun from going in your eyes. A cap. Okay. Um, oh, Georgie has pointed out I've made another spelling mistake. Denim. Denim, of course. <laughs> Silly me. Uh, let me change that. Where is it? Denim. It's a good job I've got you guys here proofreading for me. Did I put it anywhere else? Have I put it anywhere else? Mm, no. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for that. And Christina, what are you saying? Hello, Anna. Could you please tell me if collar and colour have the same pronunciation? No. Collar. Co le. Colour. Ka le. Co ka. Co ka. I know they sound very similar. Collar as in cot or o as in on. Co. Colour. Ah. Uh, like up and above. Colour. Colour. Collar, colour, collar, colour. Very similar, very subtle difference. All right, um, so here I said before, a man will wear a tie, which is this one. This is a tie, the long one that goes around your colour. Or a bow tie, which is this one. Um, does anyone here have problems tying a tie? And does anyone here know how to tie a bow tie? I certainly don't. I can tie a tie. I had to wear a tie at school, um, but I don't have any clue how to tie a bow tie. How about you guys? Tell me. Tell me what you think. Um, do you think it's easy to tie a tie? Uh, da, da, da. Oh, one of you here says, I wear a kilt to work. Amazing. What do you do for work? I'd love to know. Um, can you speak a bit slower? Mm, I can try to speak a little bit slower. Um, okay, some of you have to go. If you're leaving now, then goodbye. Thank you for joining me. Um, okay, let's get to the end of it because I also have a, another lesson to teach later with a private student. Um, I don't know how to tie a tie or a bow tie. Oh, Krishna, it's a good skill to learn to tie a tie. I, well, not unless, it's <laughs> not if you're never going to tie a tie, but it's always handy to know, I think. Um, I don't know how to tie any of them either. Um, I feel it's difficult to tie. Okay, well, maybe one day we'll do a lesson in how to tie a tie. Okay, let's carry on. Can you pronounce picture? Picture, picture, picture. All right, so we have tie and bow tie. Then we also might have braces. Braces are, um, they come over your shoulders. Usually men wear them. I have seen women wear them too. I used to have a pair of braces. They come over your shoulders. They clip onto your trousers and they clip over the back, on the back of your trousers. And they hold, their job is to hold your trousers up. But a pair of braces, they're like elasticated bands that go over your shoulders and attach to your trousers. Braces. The same as braces on your teeth. If you're having your teeth straightened, you wear metal braces. Braces, braces, okay? Um, then we also have a belt. Here, this lady is wearing a belt. A man will wear a belt on his trousers. And the little loops, the little loops on your trousers that hold a belt, I'll show, let me show you here. So I'm wearing shorts here. These loops, they're called belt, belt loops, belt loops. So you put them through your belt loops, okay? Belt loops. Um, you have belt loops in all your trousers and you put your belt through them. That is their purpose. Um, men also might wear cufflinks with their um, shirt. So a cufflink, one cufflink goes through the buttonholes in your shirt, in your cuffs. So the cuffs are the ends of the shirt sleeve. You have a cuff and the cuff will have a little buttonhole and you push a cuff link 
through it to hold the cuff tight. A cuff link holds the cuff together and you have a pair of cuff links. A pair of cuff links. Okay? Um, also, a lady would wear a dress. This lady's wearing a dress. She doesn't look very happy, does she? Can you see that? <laughs> Make her a little bit bigger. Look at her face. She doesn't look very happy at all. <laughs> In fact, she looks quite angry. She's an angry woman. Maybe, um, maybe she's been stood up or something. <laughs> okay. Um, um, can you give me more than one thumb up? No, you can't. I just need one thumb and then don't press it again because if, if you press it more than once, it will unthumb. So those of you asking if you can give me more than one thumb up, please just do the one thumb. Um, different types of dresses. We have an evening gown. An evening gown is a very posh dress that you would wear in the evening. It's normally full length. It's, a very, it's what people would wear to like the Oscars or an awards ceremony or on the cruise ships. A cocktail dress is like this. It's a shorter dress. It's still a nice dress, maybe a formal dress, but it's a shorter one. So a shorter one is a cocktail dress. And then just for an average dress that you would wear out in the sun, like the dress I'm wearing now, this is a summer dress. A summer dress. Okay? Okay, so just a very quick chat about shoes. Very, very quick chat about shoes. Um, a lady would wear high heels. High heels, of course. To have a pair of high heels, you don't need to say high heel shoes. You can, but you don't need to. You can just say high heels or heels. I'm wearing my heels. High heels is just when you've got a big heel and it makes you look taller. Sometimes men wear high heels. Some men do wear high heels if they're doing like drag um, or uh, they just want to wear heels. That's fine, that's acceptable. Um, some men actually wear heels just in general and they're still very, um, you know, very masculine with it. Um, like I've seen a lot of cowboy boot boots have quite a thick heel in it. So, but they, they don't wear high heels. High heels are usually reserved for ladies or um, uh, um, what do you call it when a man dresses as a woman? Trans, a trans dresser? I can't remember, there's a word for when a man dresses as a woman, um, other than drag. So drag is a, is a performance act where a man is dressed as a woman, he dresses in drag. Um, but anyway, high heels, men can wear heels, women can wear heels, women tend to wear high heels. Okay? So, um, oh, one of you is asking, a comment I made earlier is to be stood up. I said that woman looks angry, maybe she's been stood up. If you are stood up, it means that someone didn't arrive for your date. If you've arranged a romantic date or any kind of date, any kind of meeting, and the other person doesn't turn up and doesn't tell you that they're not turning up, they've stood you up. They've stood you up. All right, let's carry on. Um, you could have knee-high boots. These are very long boots, whether they're, got, whether they're heeled or not. I have some flat knee-high boots and I have some heeled knee-high boots. They come up to the knee. Really good in winter. They keep your legs warm. Or you might have ankle boots. These are boots that just come up to your ankles. You might have walking shoes, like trekking boots, or um, I have a pair of Salomon boots for walking, climbing mountains. And most of us wear a pair of trainers. In America, trainers are called sneakers.